Now, after we talked about stochastic approximation, it's time to talk about the celebrated Q-learning, one of the most famous algorithms of reinforcement learning. This algorithm was suggested in 1989 in a PhD thesis of Watkins. And since then, uh, his paper was cited more than a thousand times. Q-learning and its extensions are used in many interesting applications of reinforcement learning. In particular, Google's DeepMind became very famous before they became a part of Google when they published a paper where they showed how to use Q-learning at scale to teach a reinforcement learning agent to play Atari video games. Now, in its original form, as suggested by Watkins, Q-learning works only in the setting of discrete uh, states and discrete actions. In this case, instead of a continuous valued Q function, uh, it's represented as a discrete table with one value of the Q function per each combination of states uh, and action. In this case, we can say that the Q function is given in a tabulated form. Now, the main statement of Watkins Q-learning is that uh, given enough data, the algorithm that takes uh, all data point uh, sequentially, like in a Robbins-Monroe uh, stochastic approximation, converges to the true uh, Q function asymptotically when you have lots of data. More specifically, the convergence uh, uh, proofs, uh, uh, proof assumes that uh, each possible combination is encountered in data an infinite number of times. Of course, this is never true in practice, where all data are finite. Therefore, in practice, the question of numerical convergence is always something that needs to be uh, checked. So what does Q-learning do? It simply takes the next observed transition and updates the value of a state action pair that was observed in this transition. Let me illustrate its working on uh, some popular examples used for testing and teaching Q-learning. One such example could be an application of Q-learning to solve a maze problem. Here you can see uh, an example of a simple maze uh, with an obstacle shown here as a black square and an exit in the top right corner. The problem of an agent is to learn an optimal policy that would prescribe the direction of the move given the cell location of the agent. In each cell, the agent can move up, down, left, and right. So we have four degrees of freedom, uh, but some moves uh, can not be uh, done. For example, a left move is forbidden if there is a wall to the left, uh, and so on. So in this problem, we have 11 possible cell locations and up to four possible actions uh, that can be taken in each cell. And this gives us 44 possible combinations of a cell and action, which is still quite manageable a number to keep uh, as uh, an index column in a lookup table that stores the value of the Q function for all such possible combinations. The learning in such simple environment can be done uh, using simulations. Each time a particular data point is observed as produced by such simulation, it's taken uh, to update the value of the Q function at the node that corresponds to a particular combination of the state and action that were observed in this round of simulation. Now, after we spoke about what Q-learning does, let's talk about how it does it. In essence, Q-learning is just application of the Robbins-Monroe stochastic approximation but this time uh, to uh, estimate the unknown expectation that arises in the right-hand side of the Bellman optimality equation. Let's compare the Bellman optimality equation with the Robbins-Monroe update. In the Bellman equation, the optimal Q function is given by the expectation of the right-hand side. On the other hand, the Robbins-Monroe formula just shows how to update a running estimation of the mean. Therefore, we can take an individual sum of the current observed uh, reward RT and the max of the next step optimal Q function 
as the current observation xt in the robbins monroe formula. The role of uh, the current estimate of the mean x hat t uh, will uh, uh, be played by our current uh, estimate of the optimal Q function. If we specify some scheduling scheme for the lowering rate alpha k, these uh, substitutions uh, will produce the famous Q update rule of Q learning that is shown here at the bottom of the slide. In words, it says that the new update for the value of Q function at the node xt and at is given by a previous estimation of its value scaled by the factor 1 minus alpha k plus another term equal to alpha k times the new observed value of the quantity that appears in the right-hand side of the Bellman optimality equation. Now the Q iteration rule shows two very important things about Q learning, namely that it's both a model free and off policy algorithm. This means that it does not make any assumptions on a true data generating process that produces the current observation. It simply takes, us, takes it as given and updates the action value function for a given state uh, action node xt and at. It's also an off policy algorithm because the only thing that uh, matters for Q-learning uh, to work is that all action uh, state pairs will uh, be visited many times. Uh, but uh, why they were visited does not matter. In the limit when all state action pairs are encountered infinitely, uh, infinite number of times in data, Q iteration is guaranteed to asymptotically converge to a true optimal value function for all such pairs. You can read more on conversion properties of Q learning algorithms in the weekly reading for this week. Now, given uh, what we discussed in the previous lesson on a dynamic programming solution to the model, it should be evident that even though the classical online Q learning algorithm is guaranteed to asymptotically converge, it might just take it too long uh, for practical purposes. And the reason for this is that optimal hedges are obtained using cross-sectional information across all Monte Carlo paths. But such cross-sectional information would be masked by uh, any online uh, method of updating Q values and optimal hedge ratios. Um, however, the, the way out in, in, in this uh, case is also clear. What we have to do is simply to, we have to update Q values and a values of uh, A star at all Monte Carlo paths simultaneously as we did when we computed optimal hedges in the previous lesson. Because we are now in the setting of batch mode reinforcement learning, the data are already there. And there is no need actually to take data points one by one as is done in the classical Q-learning. In the next video, uh, we will see how the classical Q-learning can be adjusted for such batch mode learning.